take a look at our next alumni in your community. Hi, I'm Bruce Rose. I'm a graduate of Bristol Community College, class of 1970. Hi, I'm Cynthia Rose, graduate of Bristol Community College, also the class of 1970. I first heard about Bristol Community College through a friend of mine who worked in the supermarket with me at that time. Uh, and he was uh, <clears throat> attending Bristol Community College. And, and I was graduating from uh, Evening High School, New Bedford Evening High School. And uh, he had suggested to me, or he had asked whether or not I was going on to college. And I said, uh, no, of course not. You know, I don't have any money. And uh, I didn't think, you know, I was college material. I didn't think I was smart enough. When I was meeting with uh, the recruiter, uh, she had asked me what it was that I'd want to major in. I had no idea what you would major in in college. Um, understand, nobody in my family had ever been to college. And so I asked her, well, what do you have? And she went down the list of majors and she got to marketing and I figured I was working in a supermarket at that time. Well, sign me up for marketing and that's how I became a marketing major. When I was in high school, my best subject in high school was math and bookkeeping. And I always got straight A's in, in math and bookkeeping. So I decided that that would suit me to go to college to major in something like accounting. Through being at Bristol Community College, the guidance I got there was overwhelming and they instructed me as to what courses I should take and I followed it through and you know I took wonderful electives and all my instructors they were they were great and they reinforced that I could do it and um, I felt very comfortable there. It was a good fit for a non-traditional student to go to college. After I, after I graduated from uh, BCC, <clears throat> I went to UMass Amherst. Once I got to UMass Amherst, it seemed that every two years my academic goals seemed to change. I, <clears throat> after I got my bachelor's degree, I pursued my master's and then ultimately my uh, doctorate. Well, in the middle of my uh, doctoral studies, I had applied for a position uh, with the Board of Higher Education and uh, <clears throat> ended up taking a, a position with the Board of Higher Education back in 1979. And uh, that was the beginning, the, the <clears throat> part of the beginning of my academic career. And from there, I moved on to uh, uh, an institution. I left the, the Board of Regents and went to work for an institution in uh, New Jersey and then came back to Massachusetts uh, and became vice president for academic and student affairs at Roxbury Community College. And now I find myself at UMass Dartmouth as assistant vice chancellor for academic affairs. I had a friend who wanted to take a civil service exam. This is after me working in the field for about seven years. And it, she didn't want to go to take it alone. So she asked me if I would go with her and I ended up going with her and I took the test and I did pretty well. I became a police officer and police officers make more money if they have an advanced degree other than an associate's degree. So I applied for, to go to school at Salve Regina in Newport. And I did work major crimes so I was at court more so than the normal police officer who was in uniform. When you work major crimes you have to go to court quite a bit. One of the people that is still there, he explained to me that they were going to have an opening for an assistant clerk magistrate and if I would be interested in applying. And I said, gee, I really like my job. I, I really don't think so. And um, he said, well, you know, you have the personality, you know, you have the criminal law background. I think you would be really good for this position. And then I thought about it and I said, everybody at the district court level, there's no person of color that represents the people that we deal with in the city. And we deal with a lot of people of color. So then I said, I I'm going to go for it and I'm going to try to to get this position. And I did end up getting the job and it's been 10 years and I, and I love it. We had always known one another and when we ended up at 
Bristol Community College. It was, we really didn't think about it. We just, this was somebody I knew from the community. And uh, in fact, I used to ride up to school with, with Cynthia. I used to borrow, Cynthia. yeah, I'm sorry. I used to borrow my mother's car and, yeah. and Bruce would, would ride up with me. And Cynthia uh, was also my accounting tutor. She helped me get through accounting, uh, which I struggled with when I was at BCC. One day I just thought it'd be nice for us to, to go to dinner, so I invited her to dinner and next thing you knew, uh, <clears throat> the relationship started to get taken to another level and uh, I finally asked her to marry me. But it took five years. <laughs> it took five years. That was my way of paying her back for having tutored me so, so well. And but I always <laughs> tell him he owes me for what he has because if it wasn't for me helping him in accounting, he wouldn't have got out of there or it would have been a lot harder, I should say. Both Bruce and Cynthia Rose understand the importance of giving back to BCC. Bruce once served as a board member on the Alumni Association. Cynthia served as a school committee member in New Bedford and currently sits on the college's board of trustees.